Hey booktube! Welcome back to my channel, I am the Book Mage, and I know I just did a really big haul but apparently it is time for another really big haul because I have so many books and I don't know where they all came from, they just all appeared in like the last two weeks so I think I have like 20 something books which doesn't sound like a lot considering sometimes I haul like 60 books but like you can see I am surrounded. These books go up to here. You can't even see them on the screen. So like, I really need to do this haul and then find somewhere for them to go. There are books on the floor, there are books to the side of me. I really am surrounded. So that's why you've got another haul video sooner than I would normally do one. As usual, the way I'll be doing this is I'll kind of try and group them up into like where they've all come from and I will have everything timestamped so like you can skip to whatever section you might want to go to. So if you're just here for like the Illumicrate books or like the Goldsboro books, you can skip along to that section. With that, I'm just going to kick off and we're just going to get to it because I have a lot to get through and I would kind of like it if I didn't have to spend like literally all day on this. So, and with that I'm actually going to start with the two books that I got most recently. I picked these up yesterday. My excuse for having these is <laughs> I was left unattended in Sainsbury's near the book aisle um, and books are like four pounds in Sainsbury's so I was like yeah okay why not uh, you cannot leave me unattended around books because things will happen bad things so the first book in my haul today is Bride by Ali Hazelwood now I'm pretty sure Ali Hazelwood is like quite a well-known popular romance author I have very obviously never read anything by this author. I, I don't do like contemporary romance. It's not my thing. However, I'm pretty sure this is a romance between a vampire girl and a werewolf. It's still not normally the kind of thing I would gravitate towards. However, I will give pretty much anything with vampires in it a go. I mean, I really, really liked um, Fangs. I think it was just a comic called Fangs and it was by Sarah Anderson. And it was just a comedic little comic about a vampire girl dating a werewolf boy. And it was so my thing. I loved that comic. Um, and if this is anything like that, I mean, I don't think this is going to be humorous. I think this is going to be like, is, is this like a throwback to like, like angsty paranormal romance? I'm not entirely sure. I, I like when authors branch out, you know, it, it's fun for a romance author who does like contemporary romance to be like, do you know what, I'm gonna write a vampire werewolf romance, like, I'll read it, I'll give it a go. Um, if you're wondering why I've got a paperback, because I don't really get paperbacks anymore, um, it's because I'm pretty sure, I don't even know if this has a hardback, if it does, either I haven't seen it or it's already out of print. Um, I know this got a special edition that everyone hated. And I will not be looking for that on eBay because I also think it's awful. <laughs> so I'm um, I'm happy to just have this edition. Um, and probably somebody like Fairy Loot will do an edition of this at, at some point. Someone will do a nice edition, and if I like it, I'll get it. And if I don't like it, well, then I only spent like four pounds on a paperback from Sainsbury's. Go me! <laughs> I'm practically saving money. <laughs> um, not so much with this next one. Um, I already have this, so I'm not going to talk about it. But it is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. The edition I have is really, really, really nice. My special edition of this has some of the nicest like teal sprayed edges I've ever seen so I got this as a reading copy and then when I'm done with this I'll give it away and just get rid of it like to my mum or like to a friend or something look sometimes when you're in Sainsbury's you've got to treat yourself I did also buy a lot of Japanese snacks as well um so in all it was a good haul for me <laughs> okay this is the part you know do you remember a few years ago when Empire of the Vampire came out and I had like every copy under the sun it, it is that again <laughs> it is just that again how do I begin to do this? Um, I guess we'll just start. We'll start with a regular edition. If if you don't want to watch me open like five copies of the same book, timestamps are linked. Um, so this I'm pretty sure is just the standard edition, but I think it is signed. Um, and I picked this one up from the Broken Binding because apparently if you pre-ordered with the Broken Binding, there was like a very slim chance that they would throw in uh, an ARC copy of a novella that I actually really want. So I was like really hoping that I would get a copy of the novella. I did not. <laughs> so I just have an extra copy of this book. So it is gorgeous. Um, and don't at me because we all know that I gave, like I, I don't even know if I gave the first book like a three or a four stars. Like I'm so on the fence. Do not at me, okay? So this is the, you can't even see it because of my ring light, but that's fine. Um, this is the beautiful standard edition. Like they really did go off with this whole cover design. Sometimes I wish books were as good <laughs> as the covers around them. Um, so this is just the standard edition, nothing on the sprayed edges. However, I'm pretty sure they all, they all have this lovely foil underneath. I didn't need this, I did just kind of buy this because I was hoping to get like an extra arc novella, because there's no other way I can get that. Um, but you'll learn soon that that's not the dumbest thing I've done this month in relation to this book, so we will get there. Okay, on that note, I also have the Waterstones Special Edition. Um, this is the first edition I pre-ordered. This one is red, 
red sprayed edges. Um, it's exactly the same inside, it's got the same foil and it has the same signature. This is exactly the same as the other one, it just has red sprayed edges. Which to be totally honest you could do at home and you would never know it was the Waterstone Special Edition. <laughs> Check back here for more money saving tips. <laughs> Okay, an edition that is different though, that I have not yet looked at. This is the Forbidden Planet special edition, and their special editions so far have always had blue foil, which I absolutely adore. Blue is my favourite colour, and like, it's just... I think I like it because this has a dark cover as well. So like, in comparison to like, the, the standard edition, I just personally kind of like the blue more. If you're wondering why I have so many editions, do I have a book buying issue? Yes. Do I have an issue with getting matching special editions? Because I bought so many special editions of the first book, thinking it would be my favourite book of all time. Uh, yes. Am I going to downsize this collection, like, once I decide which editions I like the most? Absolutely. I couldn't not get the blue one. It's, like, my favourite colour. And it's darker, you know? Like, I like the red and the gold, like, I get it. But the first one was, like, black and red, and I just... it just feels more goth. It just feels more goth. I do have a much more goth one than this, but we will get to it. Probably should say as well, that edition comes with like this cool little like postcard sized art print. I think the first one did as well, um, which I probably have somewhere. I, like I never do anything with these. I just, I should probably like get a binder or something at this point. I have so many author letters and things like this that I just, they're just slotted between books. Okay, and then speaking of editions that I probably will get rid of at some point, um, this is the Goldsboro special edition and it's so hard to see because they put everything in mylar but this is a um silver alternative cover and i do really like the silver i really do like the monochrome um i i like the shine like it's so hard for you guys to see the foils but like i, I promise you they're on there the reason i'm not the biggest fan of this one is the purple edges this to me is just halloween purple i feel like they heard vampires and goth and it's the vibe it reminds me of <laughs> it's just not my favorite shade of purple the things these do have is they all have um unique foil on the inside and i do really like the foil i just <laughs> I just wish it was like a black book so this is the foil of house voss i'm pretty sure the first book has like a different foil than like the other standard editions as well it was either Divock or elon i can't remember which one it was um and this also has a quote on the back as well it says all shall kneel and it has like the seven stars i really like this design actually like this is really cool i, I feel like there's so much like there's so much fine detail like can you i know you can kind of tell there's a bird there but like it, it's very hard to parse from a distance like i can kind of see it the details are too small whereas this I think is really effective. Controversial opinion to like the back more than the front. Yeah, so these editions are also signed. I do really like this colour edition. I think this is really cool. I, I love the silver and I like the foils. I just don't like the purple. They're all so purple. All right, here's where I begin to struggle because the next one I think is at the bottom of this stack. Okay, as you can probably tell, this one is the Illumicrate special edition. Now, I do not have the Illumicrate copy of the first book. I wasn't a subscriber at the time and I don't, I honestly don't think I was that impressed with the customizations of book one. I'm actually not that bothered though because again, I'm gonna pick like one or two copies and just stick with them. <laughs> but it didn't stop me getting um, the copy of book two. And like, I didn't even go in for the early sale. I, I checked it oh, quite a while after it went live and there were still some copies left and I thought, well, since I'm here. <laughs> so this is the Illumicrate special edition and theirs are always white and gold, um, which again, I think is like an interesting um, colour scheme. I do really like white and gold. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it fits like the vibe of the series as well, but it looks good. <laughs> so again, I really like the vibe of the edges. I really like the bottom bit. I just wish it had been this busy and this detailed all the way up. I wish there had been something else like behind this heart because otherwise the rest of it is just quite, like, it's kind of plain. Are these, like, upside-down trees? What the fuck are those? Yeah, just upside-down trees. I really love the bottom of these sprayed edges. I just wish it had been that all the way up. I feel like that would have been so gorgeous. But that is, again, just taken um, straight from, like... These are just, like, crops of these little bits of the cover. So I guess they couldn't do that because <laughs> it's not original artwork. <laughs> they've just... This, this bottom bit is, like, taken from... It's just... They've just cut some bits out of, like, the front bit of the cover. And obviously this is quite sparse, like, you couldn't put that all the way up here. Um, and then the bits that are theirs, apart from the heart, I think, are just, like, some, some stock images of birds and bats and some stock images of some trees. So, like, there was an attempt. Um, I really like the spine, though. It's if you can really see, but it's got, like, this crackle effect, like, this aged, worn gold. 
it, it's like um, paint and varnish that sort of like split and I really really like that. Again, I don't think it fits the vibe of this book but I hope they do it for any other book that fits this vibe better because like I visually I love how this looks. This is what I like about the Illumina Crate ones is they also have a special foil. So again it's probably really hard to see in the lighting but like it's very shiny um, and this one is for House Divock and there's a foil on the back as well that says Deeds Not Words. This one does have a signature to like a unique um, signature page with like the seven star. I think this is really creative. I really like the end papers. I don't think any of the other books have like unique end papers. They're all just like red and black. Like, I really like this. I like the design. I think because I don't have the first book and I'm not willing to pay secondhand prices for it, this is probably also an edition that I will get rid of, which is sad because I feel like all the editions that I like the least are the ones that have the unique foils and I would really like it if every copy I had had a different foil. Then, oh, the one copy I did not buy it was the American edition because I was like I don't want it I'm so sorry if you're American but like the books the construction of the books is made slightly worse than I'm used to in the UK and the font size is massive but as it is I, I don't want to take up more space on my shelf for the same words so your font's too big guys um and I'm not a massive fan of just like characters on like the front of the book so like I just didn't get that edition shockingly the one edition I don't need <laughs> this next one is where I went a little bit crazy and is it just because like I'm a bit of a completionist Maybe. Um, if if you've seen the vlog already, you will know. Uh, Jay Kristoff had a signing tour for the book and I was not going to go because he did not come to my city. He did not in fact come anywhere freaking near it. Um, and my options then were like, I, I could go to London or nowhere because I... <laughs> you'll see what happened. Um, basically, Jay Kristoff tweeted out like two days before the start of his signing that if you came to the signing you got a unique copy of the book with a unique cover that you could only get if you physically came to the tour. I mean I am known for making bad decisions so did I on the Tuesday night book a coach to go to London on the Thursday morning to get a copy of this book? The answer is yes. <laughs> but look at it okay it's a black goth edition. First of all, th this is my favourite edition of this cover. It's black. It's all black. It's black and like it's got like little silvery bits of foil or like black bits of foil. It doesn't have like actual foil in it like the others. It is the standard, it's the Waterstones special edition so it's the standard book but it comes with a special cover <laughs> and I needed it. The thing that kind of swung me on it was not just the fact that this is like, I, I knew that I would never be able to get this second hand because tour merch for anything, like for bands, because I go to a lot of gigs, tour merch is insanely expensive secondhand because you can only get it on the tour. And I was like, I'm not looking for this dust jacket secondhand. I'm not doing it. Um, and also, I don't like to own tour merch of tours that I didn't go on. But I wanted this cover. And the main reason, it has the tour dates on the back, like a gig t-shirt, like for a tour, like for an actual band. This is like the coolest shit. This is like my favourite idea. I feel like I have seen this done before somewhere, but not printed on like an actual dust jacket. So this copy of the book is wearing the tour t-shirt from like that leg of the gig. That is my favourite thing. Um, I think it was just for the UK portion of the tour as well, which makes it even more rare. And I love that. <laughs> this is my favourite copy that I own. I am going to spray the edges black because I feel like it would fit better. So sorry to Waterstones, I just think that black looks better than red. I'm going to have to hold this really still so I can blow my name out, but this copy is um, signed and remarked to me specifically. So sorry for making Jay Kristoff attempt to spell my name. It almost does not fit. <laughs> um, and if you can't read it, the remark says, family isn't always blood which is a nice sentiment. So yeah, this is this is the copy of the book that I'll definitely be keeping and maybe like one other copy. At some point I will need to downsize, <laughs> but this copy, this has got my name in it, so this one is staying with me. Uh, and with that, I'm fucking done with like six, six copies of the same goddamn book. Nobody's allowed to judge me because it's not even the worst financial decision I've made this month. So like, are we moving on? I'm also finally now hauling the special edition of The Trials of Empire by Richard Swan. This is the best book that I've read so far this year. It was in my last wrap-up. Um, this is the Goldsboro special edition. These like special sprayed edges. They are kind of like highlighter yellow. I'm not a fan of like the colour. It might be really hard to see but it's a shield with a sword going through it, a crown around it and two wolves in like 
profile. I wanted this to finally complete the set, um, so I now have matching signed numbered special editions, um, and this one is signed by the author as well. Um, this has become one of my like favourite series of all time. The first book you're following a travelling justice who's like a magical lawman, he has like magic powers like speaking to the dead or forcing people to like tell the truth or like if he gives them a command like they have to obey it magically sort of thing and it's sort of like a fantasy murder mystery in book one that then blossoms out into like this huge epic empire-wide scope by book two um, and I really loved it, I talked about it so much, I intend to make a whole standalone video just talking about how much I love this series at some point. I don't know when because I procrastinate but I will do that. Um, so obviously I really wanted to get the last matching edition which means that I now have a spare standard edition but it's the third book in a series so I, I might end up buying like the first two books in hardcover if I can find them and maybe rebinding those into like cool unique medieval looking tome special unique editions to me. Maybe those will be my, my next special edition book bindings because like I really like these with the cover and the sprayed edges but like I feel like maybe I want more editions of books that I like. Do I have a problem? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I need to ask that when the books are like literally like eyebrow high. I guess at this point I'll just blast through a couple other like miscellaneous special editions of books. So this one is really heavy and I, I don't know why. Um, this is Fate Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is the third book. I think there was Realm Breaker and uh... <sighs> tell me the answers, Blade Breaker, um, and this is the third and final book, and the only reason I picked this up, I have not read the other two, but I purchased the special edition of book one, and then book two, and so I've just got book three to complete the set, so either I will give these away as a complete set, if it turns out I don't like them, um, I am willing to give this a go, because like, I like the vibe, but I'm not particularly hyped about Victoria Aveyard especially, I think she did Red Queen, and that's a series that I will just never read, it's so not for me. This one might be more my thing, I think it's YA, but um, this is, it's got lovely like, um, sprayed edges, and the thing I really like about these editions is they have the map as the end papers, I feel like every fantasy book should do this, it should be an industry-wide standard <laughs> to have a full colour map as your end papers. Um, and the books that don't, I'm judging very harshly. Um, I don't recall what this is about because I haven't read book one or book two. Um, <laughs> I did haul them at one point so I have talked about them previously. Um, and that's my excuse to just move on. <laughs> oh, speaking of moving on though, I'm gonna blast through this one real fast. For some reason, I was being dumb. I, I mentioned this in a previous video, it might be my wrap up. Um, I wanted to buy this candle called Jar of Bluebells. It was for a subscription series that I missed out on because um, I wasn't part of the subscription early enough to get that candle, but I saw it on eBay, and a bluebell is my favourite flower, so I was like, I'm going to add that to my eBay cart, but I didn't want to pay, like, £5 shipping for just the candle, so I went onto the seller's page, and I found this. It's a special collector's edition of... It's literally just the book version of the first Thor movie. I didn't really know exactly what it was going to be. I'm not massively into Marvel, we've had this conversation, like, ten times, um, but the reason I bought it, it, as you can see, it's this lovely, shiny blue, and, like, as much as I, it has, like, you know shiny blue pages as well, um, but it looked like this on the seller's listing and I thought it was gold. I occasionally like to take Instagram pictures of like books and flat lays and I thought this would look perfect in gold with my other gold foil book flat lays and it's blue! <laughs> it came and it's blue. Um, so it's, I, I can say nothing else about this book, it has it has um, <laughs> end papers. I, you're literally never going to read this unless you're really into the movie Thor specifically, and I don't think that person exists. And also, it's pretty much just like one scene from the same, it's like the same one scene told four different times from four different characters' perspectives. That's the entire first half of the book. The last like hour and a half of the movie is just the last half of the book. I have no reason to have this, um, but this is just like my collection of bad decisions apparently, so like I might as well talk about it. You might as well judge me for it, but silently. <laughs> Do not judge me in the comments, judge me silently. Okay, is that it? Is that... okay. Um, I think from here I'm going to move on to Broken Binding special edition books. Just because I have so goddamn many of them <laughs> and I am surrounded. I'm going to start with this one. This one is a beautiful copy of Perdido Street Station by China Mayville. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I have no idea. Um, I love, like, the colours on this. It's very, like, kawaii sunset, do you know what I mean? The sprayed edges are super detailed to match the front cover and then there's like more cityscape on the back, I love this. So this book is chonky as all heck and I know this is a very famous novel, it's just never one that I've picked up but I have heard of it and the author and I think it's been on like my radar for a while. I would have just ended up with like a regular paperback um, but because they brought out a special edition obviously 
here I am. So this says, the metropolis of New Crobazon sprawls at the centre of the world. Humans and mutants and arcane races brood in the gloom beneath its chimneys, where the river is sluggish with unnatural effluent, and factories and foundries pound into the night. For more than a thousand years, the parliament and its brutal militia have ruled here, over a vast economy of workers and artists, spies and soldiers, magicians, junkies and whores. Now a stranger has arrived with a pocket full of gold and an impossible demand, and inadvertently, clumsily, something unthinkable is released. As the city becomes gripped by an alien terror, the fate of millions lies within the clutch of renegades and outcasts on the run from lawmakers and crime lords alike. The urban nightscape becomes a hunting ground, battles rage in the shadows of uncanny architecture, and a reckoning is due at the city's heart under the vast chaotic vaults of Perdido Street Station. So like, it, it sounds, it's, honestly it sounds really good. <laughs> like, I haven't read this yet, but I've heard it's been influential and like, it's just, I know it's a really well-known, well-liked book and like, obviously if there's a special edition I'm going to buy it and I'm going to find out why everyone likes this so much and like, why it's held in such high regard. Um, I would like to know why and so I have myself a nice shiny special edition copy. I don't think, is there anything, oh yes there is. Um, I probably should have said, there is a lovely foil as well and it matches, um, like the spire on the side and on the front. So also in my haul my next book is going to be Iron Crown, so let me... Sorry, this is like such a gorgeous edition, like it has a dragon on the front! Ah, uh, any book with dragons, you know how I feel about them. So this is The Iron Crown by L.L. McRae, and we have this beautiful like wraparound dust jacket. I'm hoping you can kind of see it <laughs> even with like all the glare from my stupid ring light. Um, we have beautiful gilded edges, and I think the best part of this edition, this is so gorgeous. This is like, not generic, but like, I like classic symbolism, you know? I like swords and crowns and like, I just, I think this is a beautifully designed special edition. There is a quote on the back and it says, The dragons are the guardians of Tassar, spirits of life, of guidance and protection. Without them, we are nothing. Obviously, there are dragons on the end papers. This is so cool. And my copy is signed as well. So, Fen's first and only memory is finding himself in the middle of a forest, face to face with the dragon's spirit, mocking him, all knowledge gone apart from his own name. Lost and confused, his only hope for answers is Kalidra, a woman living on the edge of the world with her partner. Forced to return home when her father dies, Kalidra has put off facing her estranged mother for seven years, and she begrudgingly helps Fen, forging papers for him so he can avoid the Queen's inquisitors. But her mother is the least of her worries when they discover an ancient enemy is rising again. It should be impossible with the Iron Crown in power and Fen is terrified he might unwittingly be playing a part in the war's resurgence. Surrounded by vengeful spirits and powerful magic, Fen's desperate attempt to find his way home might well alter the fate of Tassar and every power in it. It sounds cool, it sounds like a pretty classic style fantasy, it has dragons in it. I feel like that's all I need to sell you on a book, or at least to sell me on a book, is to be like, it has dragons in it. Guys, if there are dragons, like, what more do you need? Okay, moving on to this cute little duo set. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what this is, but I, I don't even know if I have the other book that goes with these. So this one is What Moves the Dead, and this one is What Feasts at Night. And these are both by T. Kingfisher. So these are such, like, cute little novellas. I have definitely ordered the other one that goes with this, but, like, I'll figure it out. Um, so these both have sprayed edges. So this one is red, and, like, I, I think it's very hard for you to tell. Okay, if I hold it up next to a book with white pages, you can kind of see that this one is, in fact, yellow. I think the other book that I've ordered that isn't here is Nettle and Bone. So I'll have to check on that, because, like, I feel like I ordered that one first, but these ones just came out first. So, honestly, I don't know. Um, but these are, I don't know if this is a duology, or if, like, the whole series is, like, linked, but these are two novellas by T. Kingfisher. They look kind of, like, gross and gothic. Like, this one's got skulls and uh, mushrooms. I freaking love mushrooms. So, like, these are very much my vibe. So, What Moves the Dead has a quote on the back, and it says, The dead don't walk. The thought beat at my brain like a fragment of song and rang in my ears on an endless loop. The dead don't walk. The dead don't walk do they? So apparently this is a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher, and What Feasts at Night says, the problem with telling a story, of course, is that you already know that I'm telling you about something significant that happened. It's not as if we sat down together and you said, Alex, tell me a tale where you had a pleasant trip to your homeland and the worst menace you faced was the amount of paprika <laughs> the widow put in the sausages. Is this suddenly Dracula? <laughs> you wanted a proper hair razor, and here I am, trying to tell you one, whoever you are. Yeah, this is the follow-up to What Moves the Dead. So, I guess this is book one and book two, and I guess these novellas are linked in some way. Either it's the same characters, or it's not. I don't know. Either way, like, these were so 
cute and small and like do they have i feel like these must have foils right yes oh so what moves the dead has this cute little mushroom foil which obviously i love and it has like mushroom print and papers love that for me um and this one has like butterfly end papers it could be a moth as well um because this looks like um like a death's head moth also while we're on the topic like i do have to ask i know that this author writes with a pen name i always thought they had a hyphenated name because of the way people say it so to me the name is t kingfisher like named after the animal the bird the kingfisher but everyone i hear say their name says t kingfisher like which is it i thought it was king hyphen fisher because everyone says t kingfisher not t kingfisher i would not see the bird and be like oh it's a kingfisher no it's a kingfisher uh the word is losing all meaning but like is it just me why does every, does it i have to know does the author say it that way is it like a because it's a pen name so like is it just like a quirky pronunciation because it's like a fun pen name somebody help me out like how do you guys say it i know i normally ask a question at the end but like <laughs> if you're at like the midpoint of this video um i also have to ask how do you pronounce this name because i would say kingfisher <laughs> they're not king of the fishes but anyway the sound doesn't even make sense in my head anymore so like i'm gonna move on <laughs> I also have <laughs> so many goddamn broken binding books. I'm gonna have to clean up so much after this. So the next book in my haul is the Broken Binding Special Edition of Sunbringer by Hannah Kana. And I really like the colours on this one. Again, it's kind of like that blush pink and like this lovely like blue leaning towards cyan. I like this colour scheme. Again, it gives me very like... I, I just like it. I don't know. So this is the sequel to God Killer, which I accidentally have a couple copies of that book as well. Um, and thankfully, I managed to only get one copy of this book, which love that for me and i have not read the first book so like i'm not going to check out the synopsis of this one but it has beautiful like cyan edges um i really love the color it looks so much more vivid in person you're just gonna have to trust me um the copy is signed and numbered <sighs> again beautiful full color map end papers what was i saying every book should do this it honestly looks fantastic and we have like this foil repeating pattern on the front cover and also on the back. I think the only thing I didn't really like about the first book was that it was like a white book with a foil, um, but this one's on a black book and I honestly think it does look so much better. This is just a matching copy to go with book one because I assume I will like the first book because uh, my friend read it and she really really liked it. The vibe it gives me, it seems like autumnal and weird and like, I'm hopeful. I'm allowed to be hopeful. <laughs> okay, let's see what this one is. Oh yes, so I know what this is. This is the second book in the current um, Broken Binding series, the Hanged God series. So this is book two, Shackled Fates, and this is by Tilda Coldholt. And this has some really cool artwork on the front. Actually, I really love the back. I, I know it's because it's got ravens on it. I'm assuming this is Hugin and Moonin. I would immediately say that my favorite bit so far is <laughs> the Corvids. Actually though, um, the one day that I'm not wearing like my Yggdrasil necklace, uh, Yggdrasil sprayed edges and I think the first book was like fully in bloom and I think the third book is like like a dead tree like no leaves I think it's a really cool design so when you like put them all together you get like a full little picture that is so cool and I love that they're black amazing oh, it's almost like holographic like can you see the colors in that that's so cool um the amazing like wrap around foil of like their long ship with like all like the clan shields on it let me see if I can just like very gently hold this up for you to see it's such a cool design oh my god i love this i'm assuming this is i'm assuming this is yormungandr if you saw my wrap up i've been doing like i'm into a lot of like norse myth and this is like norse myth inspired um so i'm i love the aurora that's like my favorite colors i freaking love this <laughs> so we have yggdrasil on the back this is phenomenal artwork like this is beautiful i did read um book one of this series and i think i gave the first book a four stars it is set in the far north like in the real world but as though all the norse gods and norse myths are real and you're following multiple characters it's like a big multi-perspective like epic fantasy norse inspired a lot of battles a lot of fighting a lot of gore a lot of like myth and folklore in there um it's really really good i've talked about it multiple times so like i won't go into it in too much detail but if you want like Norse inspired fantasy that isn't just like a retelling of the Norse myths, you're following like other characters doing their own thing and it's like its own story, then this series is a great shout. Okay, and am I on to my last Broken Binding book? Okay, I know what this one is and I'm so excited for this one. This is my book club's book of the month <laughs> because I'm the one that picked it. 
The girls finally let me pick and I don't know how they're going to feel about it. It is of course the Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is an alternate colourway of the cover um, and it's filled with mushrooms and like you know I love mushrooms like I'm quite literally wearing like a mushroom top so like I'm a big fan of the cover design it has I don't know if like all of them look like this on the back I don't know if this is the same on regular copies not forgetting the sprayed edges with this chalice mushrooms I'm so into the mushrooms and I'm pretty sure this one does have a foil on it as well yes it does I love like this sort of like port wine colour like this puce colour and I really love the foil. I've got a lot of books that have like chalice and mushroom and skull symbols on recently. I don't know if that's a theme, I'm happy to make it one. So yeah this is gorgeous and no end papers. I would have liked a map. Um, it is signed. <gasps> is this a map? Okay we have a very little map but like I think you could have made it an end paper. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure this one is also kind of like a high fantasy murder mystery, but I think it leans very heavily. I think it's very like um, Sherlock Holmes inspired specifically. So I think it's it's high fantasy, but I think it's way more leaning into like the detective aspect of like the mystery, the story and that kind of thing. So I am very excited, I think. I think I've liked fantasy murder mystery in the past. So maybe this is just something I will like. Yeah, it's described as part Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, part through the looking glass. So I think it might be a bit whimsical and maybe not nonsensical, but I, I don't really know what to expect. I'm so mad. <laughs> My camera stopped recording at some point in that. In an opulent mansion at the borders of the Empire, an Imperial officer lies dead, killed when a tree spontaneously erupted from his body. Even here, where contagions abound and the blood of Leviathans works strange magical changes, it's a death at once terrifying and impossible. Called in to solve the crime is Anna de Labra, an investigator whose reputation for brilliance is matched only by her eccentricity. At her side is her new assistant, Dineas Cole, an engraver magically altered to possess a perfect memory. Soon, the mystery leads to a scheme that threatens the safety of the Empire itself. For Anna, all this makes for a deliciously thorny puzzle. At last, something to truly hold her attention. And Din, he'll just have to hold on for the ride. So it sounds like it's going to be fun and weird and like it just it looks cool it sounds cool i hope it's really good because i've made two other people read it this month um so i will definitely be getting to this one this month this is the next book on my tbr to pick up so i will 100 percent be reading it this month um and i hope it's everything i am wanting it to be um i i really wish like i'm, I'm hoping we do have like all this weird like gnarly mushroom imagery like I'm, I'm hoping that's like in the book because i freaking love mushrooms um i love them so much <laughs> Okay, and after that I think I'm going to move on to my Inkstone Books bi-monthly subscription book for a very specific reason, <laughs> which may or may not continue the theme of me buying multiple copies of the same book. <laughs> uh, because the Inkstone Books subscription book is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, so I didn't know this was going to be the book when I pre-ordered the Broken Binding edition, but this one comes with the standard cover and like, I, it just looks gorgeous. Like, I wasn't going to cancel the Broken Binding edition because I don't know what they're gonna look like, um, but honestly, these are honestly both lovely, but I just, I feel like I like the vibe of this one more. Also, like, you can kind of mainly see it on the back cover, like, I love the sort of, like, ghostly, eerie blue glow, and also blue is, like, my favourite colour, so, like, while these are both gorgeous, I think I like the blue and red as opposed to, like, the, the brownie orange and blue. This one also has gorgeous sprayed edges. They're very, very similar in that they've got like the, the skull, the chalice, and like vines and mushrooms. It's just like a slightly different um, take on the same kind of like symbols, but it's very similar. And then under the dust jacket, we have like this beautiful like cyan blue foil. Um, I really love this. I love the colour of it. Something about this reads tropical to me. I don't know if it's because these fronds kind of read more like palm trees to me at first glance. I really like the big skull though with like the shrooms growing out of its eyes. Like that's so cool. That's so me. Of course I would love that. Um, and this one has like beautiful dark teal end papers, which I love. Um, is this one... Yeah, this one is also signed and numbered, so I don't feel like I need to go through it again. Really hoping I like this book because now I have two copies of it. Again, sometimes like books that I pre-order do end up coming out in like subscription boxes and I think it's part of the issue of having so many subscription boxes <laughs> is that sometimes there's only a certain number of new releases and if I pre-order them and get them in sub boxes as well, it's just the way things turn out. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining because I really like both editions, so again it's a case of I'll, I'll read it, figure out which one I like more, and then the one that I don't, I will do something else with. I think that was the only one. So I think from that I'm going to move on to my Illumicrate monthly subscription book. I do not know what month this one is, I'm assuming it's 
the February book because I, I only have one box here, so I'm assuming this is the book for February. Could be for March because I don't remember when I did my last haul, but like, is it the February or March? <laughs> ooh, ooh, okay. A weird, weird cover, but I think I like it. I'm seeing like a rib cage with runes, so like, interesting. I, I do like the kind of like magical effect, but all of this makes me think it's probably a YA because it, just like the colour scheme honestly makes me think, oh, it's probably a YA. Um, the art style. So this is To Cage a God by Elizabeth May. And this has like a very interesting cover. I, I really like the, the shiny font. Interesting. So it's got like this weird shaped, like blown out rib cage with runes on, and there's like some sort of like spiky serpent inside it like i don't know if you can really see that there's like this little serpent um it's a very busy cover <laughs> if i'm honest there's a lot going on because there's like magic and like god rays behind it and then there's pillars which are very decorative and like an archway and like a stylized back like, it's very busy um but if i look on the back i'm seeing a serpent and like fire or magic or something and like a bone is that a femur bone or something so some sort of like serpentine beast is frequenting the bones of some sort of magical being. I'm not entirely sure. But the quote on the back says, to cage a god is divine. To be divine is to rule. To rule is to destroy. Stained glass um, and papers. Definitely a YA, 100% YA. So this is the cover and like, if I, you literally, I can make this, I can make this disappear for my next trick. <laughs> if I try and hold this on an angle, you can, it reminds me of like, um, it is very like Russian inspired, um, architectural style here and like is this like a death and hellfire raining from the sky I'm not sure <laughs> some sort of cataclysm what what I saw was if you open the end papers to like um, you've got like this very colorful very stylized character artwork it does kind of look I like the style of it but it's it's giving me very much like this is so um, definitely a YA but I think this is definitely Eastern European inspired if not just like straight up like Russian inspired oh and it's different on the back so let me read what this is about. So the synopsis says, Using ancient secrets, Galena and Sarah's mother grafted gods into their bones. Bound to brutal deities and granted forbidden power no commoner has held in the millennia, the sisters have been raised as living weapons. Now the time has come for them to overthrow an empire, no matter the cost. I'm immediately getting, um, Wicked Saints, was it, vibes? We all know how I feel about that book. <laughs> still haven't finished that series so like maybe my opinions have changed but um very similar concept except the character in that had like magic prayer beads but like she was still like a weapon of the gods um and that was also like eastern european like russian slavic inspired so we'll see um so this also says with their mother gone and their country on the brink of war it falls to the sisters to take the helm of the rebellion and end the cruel reign of a royal family possessed by destructive gods because when the ruling Illyria invade, they conquer with fire and blood. Targaryens, got it. Um, and when they clash, common folk burn. These are definitely quotes from the main series Game of Thrones, but sure. While Sarah reunites with her estranged lover, who now leads the rebellion, Galena infiltrates the palace. In this world of deception and danger, her only refuge is an isolated princess whose whip-smart tongue and sharp gaze threaten to uncover Galena's secret. Torn between desire and duty, Galena must make a choice work together to expose the lies of the empire or bring it all down. I don't know if this one is necessarily my thing. I think I'm only just put off by the fact that it's going to be YA and therefore it's going to have like a really strong romance. I don't understand why teen fantasy literature is always just romance heavy. Like I, I don't understand. It wasn't that way when I was a teenager. I'm not going to definitely say no to this but this is definitely one that's going to go in my like little TBR jar hell um, is what I'll call it where I'll probably never read it unless I pick its name out of that jar um, and in a like a read it or unhaul it style challenge so this book is probably going to go into that pile. Moving on from that though I have my Goldsboro subscription book. Okay so oh okay so this is, if you can see it because of the mylar, this is The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown. Anything that says a book about a book, now why is it so hard for me to see? Is it just, there's like a pattern underneath here, but like even I can't see it. It's so dark, there's like a red, like, if maybe if I angle it just right, there we go. You can kind of see like this red pattern, it's actually easier to see in the viewfinder. It's so hard to see even in person, like I feel like I'm going <laughs> blind. Um, I kind of wish that was like slightly brighter or something, just so I could like actually physically see it. It's like a pathway of books. It reminds me of, you, you like the beginning of Kingdom Hearts? That's the vibe I'm getting. Um, these are the sprayed edges. And do we have a design? Oh, we do. Um, so there is a design, um, a foil design under the dust jacket. That's nice because Goldsboro don't often 
put anything um, under the dust jacket. Now, we do have these end papers. These look so not in keeping with the rest of the tone of the book. Very scholastic in nature is probably all I'll say. So, New York bookseller Cassie Andrews lives quietly, sharing an apartment with her best friend Izzy, and yet she feels something is missing from her life. Then a favourite customer gives her an old and rather curious book. At the very front, there is a handwritten message. This is the book of doors. Hold it in your hand, and any door is every door. Cassie is about to discover that the book of doors is a special book, a magic book, a book that bestows extraordinary abilities on whoever possesses it. Soon she'll learn that there are other magic books out there that can also do wondrous or dreadful and terrifying things. Suddenly, Cassie and Izzy are confronted by violence and danger. The only person who can help them is Drummond Fox, a man fleeing his own demons, but who has a secret library of magical books hidden in the shadows for safekeeping, because there is someone out there, nameless and evil, who is hunting them all. Kind of interesting. I don't think this is the kind of thing that I would normally pick up. I do like books about books, but this is reminding me of several other books. <laughs> it's probably one that I will give a go, but again, this might end up in the TBR jar hell. Okay, and then from there, I think I am moving on to my fairy loot books. So one of these is definitely subscription, and I've got three here, so I'm assuming that one or more of these is like just a regular special edition and not part of the subscription book, but we will see. I have no idea what order these are going to come out in. Ooh, I know what this is. I mean, I know what it is because I can see it, but... <laughs> so this is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson, and the reason I got this is because you can't really see, but up... Can you see them? Yeah, these two books are Sorcery of Thorns and An Enchantment of Ravens. Now, I got those because I think this was the first one that Fairy Loop did, and then they released those two as a set. I didn't get this one initially because... They released this one just on its own, and I would never buy this just on its own, unless it was part of a wider set. Um, when they released the rest of the set, I got the rest of the set, and therefore I wanted to get this one. Here's the bit where I'm pissed. I feel like I rant about Fairy Loot every single time, every single time I do one of these hauls. I have Sorcery of Thorns, and they released a matching edition like this, and it's called, like, it's like, Stories from Thorn Manor, or something like that. And they did not make enough copies for everyone who has Sorcery of Thorns. So even though I was, like, it sold out so fast, <laughs> I was in the queue with my early access and it sold out and they're just not printing more and I'm like, that's so, it's so weird to me. <laughs> they did not make enough copies for people to complete the full set. Um, so I don't know if this was a reprint or just like an extra stock edition or what, but they re-released or resold, like this was just in the, in the regular shop, like this wasn't even, I didn't have to queue for this, there was no early access, it was just in the shop and I saw it and I was like, I'm just going to buy that while I'm here, because then at least I have almost the full set. Um, I just don't have the novella for the books that I actually bought on Early Access. So, like, I don't know. My, my friends and I have agreed that Fairy Loot is by far the worst for Early Access sales and information and just the way they do it. And I feel like I complain about them every single time I do one of these hauls. But um, I'm just not going to go into it. It's just, it's just maddening to me that I can... I can own all the rest of it, but like, I still don't, they're just, even with early access, you just could not get a copy unless, they just print such a small amount, it's just, it's weird. Don't do a set if you're not going to actually do a set. So weird. Anyway, um, so <laughs> this is Vespertine. Um, I really like the aesthetic of this set. Um, I started buying these before I'd read my first Mar Margaret Rogerson book, and I feel like I really should have liked Sorcery of Thorns, and I don't know whether I just didn't enjoy it as much. I think I give it like a, a three stars-ish. Um, I don't know whether I just didn't enjoy it because it was like, maybe I just wasn't in the right headspace, because on paper you would think that I would love everything about that book, and it ended up just being kind of mediocre. At this point I'm just completing the set, <laughs> because I already have half of it. Um, goodness knows if I will ever manage to complete the set with the actual novella. I think because that one was printed in such small quantities, it goes for an insanely high price. Ah! This should be printed in a one-to-one -one ratio. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so this has really nice, um, designs, and there is some character artwork. I re I actually, I like the designs. It's, um, very, like, angsty, almost gothy sort of vibe. It's not quite goth, but, like, I like this. Okay, I have another fairy loot. I think I know what this one's going to be. Yes, I do. Okay, yeah. Again, this was another book that I had so much trouble with. Not the buying of it, just the getting of it. And again, it's just it's just because fairy loot... Uh, my god, why is it fucking squished? How have you packaged this? So this is my fairy loot edition of Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. These are the sprayed edges. So the fairy loot editions have like this. It's so hard to kind of see, but it is like a holographic foil. Can I like... <laughs> Can I get the holographic to show 
at all from any angle. I really don't think I can. You'll just have to trust me that in person it's like rainbow holographic. Um, so this is the sequel to Legends and Lattes, or I think it's the prequel to Legends and Lattes. There is a foil of a stack of books. Honestly, a bitch can relate. Oh, and it's also on the back as well, so that I'm I'm double stacked, and you know what? I fucking am. So this has the original, um, like, I think this was like the artwork for the indie cover. So I won't spend too long on this one. Um, I feel like everyone already knows about this book and this series already. This next one, I'm guessing this is the Fairy Loot monthly box for, I think, February? We are in March though, so this could be the March box. Okay, I did see this theme before. Um, I completely fucking forgot. The theme is Vikings. I so wish this had come last month, because um, as you all know, I was on a massive Norse fantasy kick last month. I wish this had either like been a month earlier or like had arrived earlier enough so that I could have put this in my last haul. And it's probably going to be another YA romance that's supposedly an adult romance, because that's just what Fairy Loot do. But like the fact that it's Viking, the fact that it is Norse inspired, purportedly, I'm assuming so. Like. It says Viking. Like, this has got to be like a Norse fantasy, right? Please. <gasps> okay. Look, I'm seeing runes. I'm seeing... I'm seeing runes. Like, I, I can read... Th these are not... I think I, I can read Futhork. Well, I can read like a, a bastardized version of Futhork that actually includes... I know more runes than are in... I just know some runes, okay? I don't know all of them. I know one set of runes plus some extra. Um, and have been mostly fluent in them since I was like seven or eight. <laughs> That's what I did as a child. Okay, I think this is the front. I can feel some padding in here, so I think this is the front. So, let me just... <gasps> okay, what the fuck? The fact that this is a fairy loot book and it looks like this. Okay, I love it. This, potentially one of the prettiest books we've ever received from fairy loot. I'm trying to think, like, I know, like, The Hurricane Wars was pretty, but I'm never going to read that. Maybe this is tied with Amina al Sarafi for, like, prettiest book I have ever freaking received. Oh, my, I love... I love, I love Norse imagery, like, the knots, the ravens, the little, oh, look, it matches my fucking ring. Oh my, I, lo I love this so much. A Fate Inked in Blood, it's called, by Danielle L. Jensen. I recognise this author's name. Um, I'm not even like, ugh. like, look at these sprayed edges. I love this, there's like this fading in and out knot work. I guess it's meant to look like it's a, maybe like a metal catching the light in certain places. Um, overlaid with runes. Okay, so when I said I didn't think the runes said anything, um, this says Futhork, and then there's a G at the bottom. So, essentially this says A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> like, um, it's, it's F, U, Thorn for T, H. But these are just the first letters in the runic alphabet. Um, so yeah, it just says Futhork. So this is the one that I can read. I, I had thought they might say something like, maybe like the characters' names, or maybe it would say something like Fate or Blood or something like that, um, but it's it's literally just the alphabet, which, you know, guys, you could have just sent me a DM. I would have I would have written you something out. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are, like, runic translators online. I, I feel like, I feel like you could have put something else here, instead of just literally the equivalent to the first five or six letters of the alphabet. But sure, it's, it's, it's basically, like, QWERTY, <laughs> you know? It's Futhork. Um, but I still like it. Okay, I'm I'm so excited that like I'm scared to see what they've done under the dust jacket because I'm like, is it gonna be is it gonna be like more ugly character foils or like just a character art print? Like, okay, oh okay, I'm spoiling myself. I'm gonna come back to look at the interior pages because I feel like the end papers have some artwork on. Okay, okay, I'm 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 right on all counts. So again, it's so hard to see. If I okay, I'm gonna have to kind of like angle it here. Um, so it is foils and it is character foils. I feel like these look a lot better than the um, the dreaded Red Rising character ones. Like, can you actually? I think you can kind of see this. I I can't see the viewfinder because I can only see like the back of the book. They do also like I really like the knot work on the outside. I like the symbols. Like I really like all this. I, I really like everything other than the two characters. I don't think it looks too bad. Like, I don't mind the character artwork as much because it's kind of inobtrusive, because it's like, it looks almost like a storybook um, thing because of like all the, all the work around the outside. So I definitely prefer it to what other sort of character files we've had. So this is the end paper and I love the artwork of this character. I, I, I know for a fact that like nobody who follows me here that doesn't know me in real life will have seen like any of my old Skyrim um, fan art, but this is like this is like a, a slightly more professional version of like what a lot of my Skyrim fan art used to look like. Um, and is it the same on the back? No, we have definitely the love interest on the back. 
sure. This is gorgeous. This is my favourite thing about this book. Um, and even if this is bad, I think I have to keep this just for like this cover, because this is... I would love this as a poster. I would wear this on a t-shirt. This is... honestly, I just really like... I really like Norse stuff. I don't wear as much of it as I would like to because of certain other groups of people wear a lot of Norse things. So like, I don't feel like I'd, I... I'm even wearing like Norse runes on this necklace. Maybe I have too many on today. I, I feel like I've got to like, <laughs> tone it down. So let's see what this is about. A woman blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power-hungry king, while also fighting her growing desire for his fiery son. In this Norse-inspired fantasy romance from the best-selling author of the Bridge Kingdom series. I think I almost bought the Bridge Kingdom many years ago and decided not to because I think... I've heard good things about it, I just don't think it was my style. I like that this is at least saying, look, it's it's romance forward, like, it's a fantasy romance. Which I thought Fairy Loot were doing a whole separate subscription for, like, fantasy romance, but I, I feel like we're getting fantasy romance and then they're also doing romanticy, but nothing that isn't romance. And I'm like, it's it's a very... that's a fine line. Like, I feel like you could just get... I feel like the subs are basically the same. It's, it's what I'm feeling. Bound in an unwanted marriage, Freya spends her days gutting fish, but dreams of becoming a warrior and of putting an axe in her boorish husband's back. Freya's dreams abruptly become reality when her husband betrays her to the region's Jarl, landing her in a fight to the death against his son. To survive, Freya is forced to reveal her deepest secret. She possesses a drop of a goddess's blood, which gives her magic capable of repelling any attack. A magic that was foretold would unite the fractured nation of Skarland beneath a king, the one who controls the shield maiden's fate. Believing he's destined to rule Skarland, the fanatical Jarl binds Freya with a blood oath and orders his son, Bjorn, to protect her from their enemies. Desperate to prove her strength, Freya must train to fight and learn to control her magic, all while facing perilous tests set by the gods. Except the greatest test of all may be resisting her forbidden attraction to Bjorn. If Freya succumbs to her lust for the charming and fierce warrior, she risks not only her own destiny, but the fate of all the people she swore to protect. Potentially. Maybe. I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, mm, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. I'll certainly read it. I feel like I'm primed to read this. I also have um, very fresh in my memory a lot of like refreshed um, knowledge on this culture and time period um, and like the myths and so on. So I'll be, I, I'm not sure if this is high fantasy or low fantasy exactly because it's kind of vague at the moment. I'm assuming it's low fantasy but we'll see. You can't just have vibes and nothing. Like, I, I want this to be historically accurate. <laughs> so it's definitely one that I will be picking up. Um, even if I don't like it, I'm going to keep it because I really like the cover. So I'm definitely really happy to get this. Like, this is stunning. I did not think we would get anything like this from Fairy Loot, um, and I'm really glad. You know, they disappoint me so often, but then they just, every now and again, they put in something like this. I'm, I'm powerless to resist. What am I supposed to do against this? So I think I'm now just down to ad hoc special editions. The first of which I picked up, I think these were like from Kickstarter, but I think I picked them up like post the Kickstarter, so it was a bit weird getting these because I could buy them and pay for them, but I didn't get any of the Kickstarter email updates, so these just appeared out of the blue. Um, I had no idea where they were coming, but it is one of the completed um, leather-bound sets from Michael J. Sullivan. I can't remember the full series name, <laughs> but book one is Nolan, book two is Farallane, and book three is Esra Haddon. And book three is chonky, these are incredibly heavy. And they come in this slipcase with like this little foil on the side. So this is book one. And like, I love how these feel like, they, they feel like such an old school, like, leather binding. These feel, a lot of the time when I buy like a more, not quite antique, but like an older leather bound edition, this is more what they feel like. And I think it's because these came out before like the current, like, massive pickup in um, Kickstarter, like, leather bound and special editions. So they're very heavy and chunky as well. Here we have book two, and the foil is very shiny. I love the design of these, like the maritime stuff at the bottom. I really like the star and the trees at the top. Oh, and this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Finally, we have um, book three, which I cannot hold up for a very long period of time. This is an arm workout, but again, these are beautiful, lovely editions. And I really, really like them. They're so heavy, so I am not going to hold them up anymore. And because they don't have dust jackets, I can't, like, read you a synopsis. So you will just have to be content with the pretty foils, because I can give you no more. I could Google it, but I don't want to. <laughs> okay, and then this one is the very last book in my haul, um, and it might be the most special. <laughs> so special it's still in the Mylar, so let me just fix that. Oh my god, I'm so thrilled about this one, like, can you see the foil on the slipcase? I'm so hyped for this one. This might be like one of the prettiest books I've ever held in my hands. Um, this is the special edition of Threadlight by Zach Argyle. Look, the spine 
this this is like the most gorgeous spine I have ever laid eyes on. This is like, this is so beautiful. Look at this book. Look at this. This is stunning. The blue and gold, like this looks so good. You literally cannot tell me different. Um, there is a quotation on the back, also in foil. And it says, the only flames that are remembered are the ones that burn the world. These are the sprayed edges looking phenomenal. Like they're so finely detailed. And then we have this absolutely beautiful gargantuan thick boy spine. <laughs> like, look at the size of this book. So this copy also comes with illustrated end papers and a full colour map on the other side. Like clearly they knew my demands. And I can't recall if this is an illustrated edition. Yeah, so this is partially um, illustrated. It's it's a beautiful beautiful edition of a book like the chapter headers like you have these like really detailed chapter headers at the top um it's very heavy so i'm also going to put this one down um but yeah this is stunning and like i love that we've got like the the foil on the slipcase as well on both sides again it's another one that does not come with um like a little synopsis i always read the synopsis and usually i might check out like a preview chapter before i back anything on kickstarter which is how i kind of vet the things that i back on kickstarter but they sometimes take over a year to get to me and i can't remember a random synopsis in my head that long so i do not remember <laughs> alas um so i i think that's it am i done oh my god am i free so once again that is it that is the entirety of my haul um, I feel like most of this haul was taken up by <laughs> six editions of the same book. And the thing is, I have seven editions, because I have a reading copy. So, like, I didn't even haul all of the ones that I have. Um, I, I feel like I had, like, 20-something books here, but, like, <laughs> if you take all those out, maybe I only had, like, ten. I, honestly, I don't know. My brain's melted at this point. Do you know what? We've had a lot of mushroom stuff, and I'm pretty sure there's a mushroom emoji. So leave me a wonderful little mushroom emoji to match, like, my mushroom ring, and, like, my mushroom shirt. <laughs> and, like, the mushrooms that are probably growing in my brain from areas of disuse. Um, leave me a little mushroom. And I guess, in, you know, solidarity, let me know what's, like, either the worst or the dumbest uh, book buying decision you guys have ever made. Either, either accidentally buying a book multiple times, or just too much money that you spent on one book or you bought something you just hated it, like, make me feel better about my own bad choices. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching, thank you for putting up with my, like, bad book buying habits. Do not know when the next haul is gonna be, but like, I always say, like, hopefully they'll be less chaotic, but like, they never are. <laughs> I would say check out the rest of my channel for more videos like this, but given the length of these videos, you're probably sick of seeing me already, so like, I'll just pray that you come back for the next one. So, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and maybe, hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye! Thank you.